The Valheim Ashlands update has introduced over 30 brand new weapons, including bows, swords, and even dual wielding axes. So today, I'm going to walk you through every weapon's attack patterns, special buffs, and overall effectiveness, so you can find out which ones are actually worth using. Let's get into it. Weapon number one is the Slayer, a massive two-handed greatsword that does 170 slash damage at the base level. Its attacks are slow but heavy hitting, with the final move in the combo being a downward slice which will stagger enemies. The the timing of your strikes within the combo can also be delayed, so consider timing them to lead with that downward slice, which will stagger your enemy, allowing you to hit some crits as you start the next combo. The special attack with this sword is a long range thrust, which is perfect for landing hits from a safer distance. Pair this with a dodge roll right after, and you should be able to avoid attacks from slower hitting enemies. Just be careful when using it against faster enemies as its long execution time can leave you vulnerable. All in all, the weapon is slow but can pack a punch. Make sure to consume some high stamina foods when wielding it as it does take a lot of stamina to use. And if you're coming up against a horde of enemies, really try leading your swings in early so you have time to avoid their counters and then you'll be wiping the floor in no time. Now before we move on, almost every base weapon added has three upgraded versions to go along with it. This includes a Nature, Blood, and Lightning variant. The Nature variant inflicts passive poison damage to creatures that aren't immune, and has a 20% chance to entangle an enemy with roots, rendering them completely immobile for a couple of seconds, allowing you to land some free strikes with no reply. The Blood variant will deal 0.2% more damage for every health point you have missing. Now this has to be health that you're actually missing. If you're at 25 health because you haven't eaten anything, there will be no effect. Lastly, the Lightning variant inflicts passive lightning damage, and has a 25% chance to proc its chain lightning effect, dealing bonus damage to any enemies near the original target you struck. These upgraded variants are the same for every other weapon on the list, with the exception of some minor percentage differences. So naturally, I'll be covering more of the base weapon characteristics. Also, upgrading your weapon does not affect the percentage chance of executing any of the upgraded effects, just in case you were wondering. Weapon number 2 is the Nidhogg. This one-handed sword has a base of 135 slash damage. The attack combos are nearly identical to those of the Slayer, just being performed at a faster speed. Its special attack is once again a long range thrust, and all the things I said about that in the previous section are true here too. Of course, the major upside of this weapon is the ability to carry a shield along with it, making you more resistant against bigger hordes of enemies, strong attacks, and of course, projectiles. The third weapon on our list is the Flame Metal Mace. With a base damage of 135, this is the only weapon from the Ashlands that specializes in blunt damage, giving you a significant advantage against any skeletal enemies. If you've used the mace from any of the previous tiers, you'll be familiar with its 3 swing combo, as well as its special attack, the Uppercut. Extremely useful in combat to either land the final blow against an enemy, or to deal massive damage while simultaneously knocking them back and much like the Nidhogg, you'll want to use a shield alongside the mace to take full advantage. Next up are the Berserker Axes, probably one of the most exciting new weapons in the update as there haven't been any of its type previously. These dual wielding axes deal 140 slash damage at the base level, and they are one of the fastest hitting weapons in the game. The attack combos are pretty much infinite, with each strike landing right after the previous one and the special attack is also a one-of-a-kind as you propel yourself forward before doing a double slash with your axes. The move is great for leaping in to get the first hit, staggering the enemy, and then quickly transitioning into your primary attack combo, dealing a heap of damage without taking any yourself. Parrying is also a possibility with this weapon as it was with the previous ones, but you might be better off using your dodge roll to keep up the faster playstyle. And as a bonus, your right-handed axe can also be used to chop down trees at a pretty quick rate. The next weapon on the list is the Splitnir. This one-handed spear deals 135 pierce damage at the base level. The moveset on this weapon is as basic as it gets, with a repeated jab to poke your enemy's eyes out. The special attack is to throw the spear, which you then need to retrieve, at which point I would just use a bow. So here's an example of me throwing the spear, and not getting it back. So in conclusion, I'd use a bow. Now before we get to the bows, we're going to take a look at the only one-of-a-kind weapon on this list, the Dyrnwind. 
the Dernwin. This flaming one-handed sword has no upgraded versions. It does a base level of 145 slash damage plus 10 elemental fire damage, which is induced on your enemies with every hit. The moveset combos and special attack are the same as the previous two swords we discussed, and again, you should pair it with a shield to take full advantage. This is the only weapon in the game to come with a magical effect right out the gate, without needing to enhance or upgrade it further. Plus, it's hard to beat in the style department, as any Vikings walking around with a flaming sword on their back is sure to turn some heads. Next up, we'll take a look at the staffs, and each of these are completely different, so we'll start with the Staff of Fracturing. As with all staffs on this list, you'll want to eat some magic-specific foods, as all of these attacks will cost either to use. The Staff of Fracturing is a two-handed staff that deals elemental fire damage, consuming 35 Eider with each strike. The attack launches a small ball of fire that erupts into a cluster of smaller embers upon contact with the ground. Each attack will instantly light enemies on fire, dealing additional damage passively, and hitting an enemy directly will land most of the dispersing embers as a result. Now, contrary to how it may look, the Staff of Fracturing doesn't actually do a whole lot of AoE damage, and therefore isn't that effective against hordes of enemies. Its fire element also doesn't make it particularly effective against many creatures in the Ashlands, but keep in mind that this is one of the easier staffs to craft. The next staff on the board is my personal favorite, and it's the Troll Staff. Just like the name implies, this staff allows you to summon a massive Ashlands Troll for 120 Eider that will wreak havoc on any enemies in the vicinity. As it summons, a massive boulder comes crashing down with it, which does a huge amount of damage to both enemies and the environment, which can actually make this a considerable weapon of choice when farming nodes or trees. Now, unlike summons from other games, the troll does not have a decaying lifespan, and will only die should the enemies around it be able to defeat it in battle. And if you have enough Eider regenerated, there's nothing stopping you from summoning a second one of these creatures at a time, giving you a pretty formidable duo to do your bidding for you, or at the very least, help with taking away some aggros. The summon limit for the troll stab does cap off at 2, and trying to summon a third will still deplete your Eider, but will have no effect. Keep in mind that although these trolls are summoned by you, they have no sworn allegiance and will willingly attack you as well. The only exception is that they won't attack each other, so at least there's some sort of teamwork going on. The third staff in our repertoire is the Staff of the Wild. Upon use, this staff will summon a spiked root for 55 Eider, which will automatically strike any enemies that come within range. The orb that is casted out to summon the root doesn't deal any actual damage apart from a little bit of poison damage and some knockback. The roots themselves don't have health bars and cannot be attacked, instead decaying after around 20 seconds of being present. Upon striking an enemy, the roots have a chance to entangle their target, keeping them grounded and unable to move, making them vulnerable to even more strikes. And unlike the troll summons, there is no set amount of roots that can be summoned at a time, and they will not attack or damage you. So kiting enemies through a field of spiked roots is definitely a viable strategy. The last staff on our list is the Dunder, and it is completely different from the last three we just covered. Upon equipping, the Dunder uses 44 Eider to charge, and upon firing, releases a blast of elemental lightning. Much like a shotgun, the Dunder is most effective at closer ranges, ensuring all bolts of lightning connect with their targets. The staff also knocks you and opponents back upon firing, making it one of the safer weapons to use in close quarters combat, as you'll be pushed out of harm's way, giving you time to reload. The last tip for this weapon is try not to jump or sprint while reloading, as this will cancel the reload, but will still eat up your Eider reserves. The second last weapon class on the list are the Ashfang Bows. This bow does 82 pierce damage at the base level, and well, there's really not much else to say. It works the same as any other bow, so if you want a little more spice, then try out one of the elemental versions instead. And now we come to the very last weapon on the list, the Ripper Crossbow. The size of this thing is massive, and it does 220 pierce damage at the base level. When firing, there is a small amount of recoil that sends you back, but there is even more that sends enemies back. Despite the speed and force that the bolts travel at, they will not penetrate targets to hit other enemies in behind. Also, keep in mind that despite loading your crossbow, unequipping it will also unload it, forcing you to reload again when you pull it back out. And much like the Dunder Staff, jumping or sprinting will also cancel an active reload. If you want to take full advantage of this weapon, I'd recommend using it from afar to snipe unsuspecting enemies. The velocity at which the bolt travels allows you to maintain accuracy from far distances, making it extremely satisfying to one-shot enemies like a marksman from a distance before closing in for the fight. 
If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment letting us know which Ashland's weapon is your favorite and if you have any additional tips. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.